Somerville, 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 I am back. This is Arted Scat. In case you forgot, I'm Janet Cormier with still another superb artist from Somerville. Does the talent ever stop? <laughs> it does not. It's always here. And we get the cream of it. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> this episode of Arted Scat, we have Kathy Gregory. And I have known this woman for a while. We actually uh, took over a <laughs> space at Open Studios when the guy who was in charge didn't show up. Kathy is someone, along with me, we coup d'etat, coup d'etat, and took it over. And since then, and that's been a number of years, um, we've kept in communication, we go back and forth. And Kathy has evolved and changed her work in dramatic ways, and she agreed to come on the show. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? And uh, share with us some of the changes that she had, that her work, how her work has evolved. So welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for coming. And you're doing some really exciting work. Um, I think right now you might tell us, because it's so, this is so impressive what she has done. Before we roll back, let's go forward. Kat, well, did you start off as a paint? Start off as a painter. No, I have uh, two degrees in sculpture, actually. Oh, okay. And have always loved the three-dimensional quality of everything, including friendship. Yes. Including friendship. And um, over the years, I have collected junk. When I walk along the street, I tend to look down and I find treasures. I find rusted metal pieces of wire that have been smushed, all kinds of really neat things. And I, the thing I like about them is the texture and the quality. Is there something intriguing about it? The color, the shapes, it's all very natural and yet it starts with something that used to be something. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I've collected it. I have boxes and boxes of this stuff and have never really paid attention to it except that I go through it from time to time and just revel over the beauty of these things. And at one point I thought, I wonder what would happen if I put them together. So I epoxy, I, I, I took a bunch of pieces and put, made sort of a little relief. And when I say little, I mean little. They're generally like four inches tall. Make a relief, epoxy them together. Epoxy being a glue. A glue that has two tubes. You mix it. It's very solid. Mm -hmm. And they were intriguing. They were like little pieces of sculpture. And it, you could even say that they almost look like jewelry, except that if you made them into jewelry, you'd tear all your clothes up. So anyway, you have these beautiful reliefs. And I thought, gee, I wonder what would happen if you blew them up. So my husband, who is a documentary filmmaker and um, photographer, Bob Nesson, photographed them for me. I blew them up. I have a master printer who blew them up to 24 by 36, and all of a sudden something completely different happens. The color is rich, the texture is beautiful and kind of nasty, and has just an incredible appeal. And because I can't leave anything alone, um, I decided to enhance them using colored pencils, because I've been using colored pencils my whole life. And all of a sudden you get this incredible three-dimensional quality, and something that is kind of magical. It is. And it gives hope to those of us who collect junk. <laughs> you became our poster person. Well, you were the reason. Well, the, the interesting thing to me is whenever I mention this to people, there is something, and I don't quite understand it yet, there's something really essential about this because I can't tell you the number of people who say, oh yeah, I have a collection, or oh yeah, I pick this stuff up all the time, or oh yeah, isn't it beautiful? And I think there is something that's, that touches us very deeply about these things. And I don't know whether it's because the, the purpose has changed. I don't know if it's because nature has taken over. I'm not quite sure what it is, but there's something that really touches. It could change with each person, too. Yeah. You know, it's a childhood memory. Yeah. It's um, a teen memory. It's, it's the first car, piece of the first right. car. Now, what really gets me, though, is the expression in your face as you're talking about <laughs> this. Because you are so impassioned, which is just part of you working. Like, that kind of 
love and passion and um, which artists need. Yeah. You know, and we people ask, well, how do you get that? You have to find the right materials, mm -hmm. you know, and, and then you get it's love. Mm -hmm. It's easier to find love with materials, I think, than people. <laughs> But that's just me speaking, because you and Bob have been together a while. And we yeah. don't want to talk about my life. But it is, it, it's finding the right combination. Yeah. And then you have your vision of how you want to, you put control on it, but you allow the piece to speak. I have to let this, the piece speak. And as a matter of fact, when I, when I do these, the reliefs, <laughs> it's so much fun. I spread all these pieces out on a big table and then I kind of play and I see, okay, well maybe this goes on this and this one goes on this. So I'm actually working on a bunch of pieces at the same time and lots of times it just doesn't work. But by playing, I might have one funny shape like this funny shape that's got to go somewhere and I'll try it on a different. Can I have that for one minute? Sure. See that? I'll very place dope. it on different pieces to see where it fits, and then when it is right, it's right. And in a way, the piece tells me what works as opposed to me telling it, in a way. And then when I blow it up, I have no idea what I'm going to do. And so I'll have, when I'm actually drawing, I'll have the little piece in front of me, and I'll be working away and sometimes I'll not understand exactly what's going on in the piece and so I'll look at the little one and it tells me where the shadow might be or whatever. And where the line is because this is this gives you a line where you wouldn't expect it. Right. It's the rust that right. you're following. Right. And so for all you minimalist out there with your white walls, ha to you. <laughs> Kathy Gregory speaks for many of us. This is a new <laughs> movement. And, and just the, the usage of, well, letting the piece, like you said, speak for yeah. itself is wonderful. Now, these pieces, you want to do the smaller pieces first, or? Well, why don't we do this one, since, okay. since this one is up here. And I'm going to give this So one. here's the, the little piece, and there's the big piece. So uh, this the, is the inspiration. Yep, that's the inspiration. And, and the, the fun thing is when I show the pieces, both the little and the big, people will come and say, oh, that's a washer for a something or other. Or, oh, that's a blade from a, from a razor blade cutter. Or that's the way that we put gas in our tank or, you know, something. And so lots of people bring understanding about what these pieces are that I have no idea sometimes. So it's everybody brings something to it both in terms of their own interpretation of what they see, sort of like a Rorschach test, everybody has their own approach, or um, from the reference that lots of times I don't have. It's like an antique road show type thing. <laughs> and so people, you know, you show them stuff, but it's in reverse. Right. Now they're telling you what it is. Yes, exactly. And then the Rorschach part is like when you both interpret it and you turn it around and say, what does this remind you of? Oh, that's the time I locked my cousin in the closet. <laughs> but, you know, and blah, 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 blah. Right. But this is so beautiful. It's and great fun. You reproduce the beauty in a different way. So it's, yeah. not a, it's not a direct reproduction. No. And sometimes what I'll do is something very subtle like, you might not notice it right away, but there's a little bit of yellow down here. And what I'm trying to do is to redefine the planes that you can see, but it's very subtle and you wouldn't see it in that, but you'll see it in this. There's red along the outline outside that sort of gives it a little bit of depth. And I use black a lot to really make it pop. And also the angles are a little different because mm -hmm. it seems like there's more length here and there, so the exact, so it's, it's, it's beautiful. I don't know if it's the way the camera was. I don't know exactly, but it's, it's, a, it's a photograph of it. So there you go. And it's delicate, people who don't think, you know, this is lace. This is yeah, it looks lace. like it, yeah. And then we have this piece. Mm-hmm. And do you title your pieces? Yes, I do. Okay. Uh, that one is Moonscape. Uh, because when I blew it up and colored it, I put a lot of red in it, and it made me think of the moon, for sure. And it's so, it's very serene. That one is. Some it's of them are, some of them aren't. Some of them have motion, like this one that you had a minute ago has a little bit of motion to it. Mm -hmm. 
your eye comes from the left, goes back to the right, um, and sometimes they're quiet. That one's one of the more quiet ones. This one sounds like it needs, it, it, it seems like it has its own music with it. It does. Soundtrack. Uh, yeah, right. Uh, and the interesting thing is, um, when you see the larger piece, what you can't see in the small one so much is when I glued it together, there's a big blob of glue here. And when I colored it, that became something completely different. It became so much a part of the piece. So sometimes that happens, and that's just a happy accident. And then we have this very delicate piece. That's called forward. <laughs> and that is a blade from a knife cutter, I guess you call it. Um, and that one is a little bit different because I used string on it and added a little bit of something that was not found. So that's a, that's a little different, and I don't know if that's a direction I'm going to continue in or not. It just sort of depends. Well, the orange, too, complements the rust. Right. And so it, it sort of unifies the piece. Yeah, thanks. It's very, it's balanced. Mm -hmm. And it's, when you see these pieces, you're just going to be amazed because it started out with this woman with this incredible sense of um, imagination, seeing things that you might think are scraps on the street, so don't run her down when you see her. <laughs> and then she assembles them and creates a new life for them. Mm -hmm. She builds a community based on this. Right. And then she recreates it again with camera and then creates a larger piece which is the same and different. Right. So you're creating like two or three pieces of art each time that you do yeah, this. Each phase has its own um, element of creativity. I've always been um, curious about scale. There's something about scale. And in fact, uh, right out of graduate school, I was teaching at the University of Hawaii, and I did a mural for the Honolulu Airport. And the initial sketch is maybe seven inches by maybe one inch. Mm -hmm. And the final piece is 112 feet long. Which is, I can't even imagine. I it, can't get past 5'8". Yeah. So <laughs> it's just like, you know, that's it. But, and so you, you're able to, a lot of people aren't able to imagine space like that, that large, the largeness to be able to transfer it. Because mm -hmm. I'm having a hard time mm -hmm. picturing 108. Right. And then being able to take all that. And, and each artist has their own way of dealing with space. Some mm -hmm. want the tiny spaces mm -hmm. and then others are able to go between the two worlds mm -hmm. of tiny and huge mm -hmm. and then recreate and recreate. Mm -hmm. And then your use of white space yeah. to depict this is just extraordinary because it's so clean as opposed to the sharp rusty edges mm -hmm. and yet it all works it, it 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 just gives you a wonderful feeling thanks well I, I like the idea of sort of it floating and in fact after the photograph is taken before i send it to my master printer i put it in photoshop and get rid of the background which is quite a lengthy process especially with something with as many ins and outs as this lacy piece a little bit less so uh, with this one, but that one was really a lot of work. How long um, does it take you to do a piece? That's a really hard question to answer because they vary so much. Um, something like this takes an incredibly long time because I have to be so careful about the Photoshop part, and then when I'm coloring I have to take quite a bit of time to make sure I'm really touching the edge. And because I have a white background, I have to be careful not to go over the edge. So it really takes a lot of concentration. Others a little bit easier. Um, so I can't really say how long it takes. And plus, I can't really say how long it takes to make the little ones either because I'm working on multiple ones at the same time. And what I'll do with all of my pieces as I'm rearranging and arranging and rearranging again and again, I'll leave them for a while and then work on one of these pieces and then come back and see that there are some that really just work and others that just don't work. And so I'll take them away and put them away, put other pieces out. And so it's such it a long like process. So oh my God, it's so much fun. Oh, oh, yeah. oh my yeah. kids will never feel the same about cleaning up your room again. <laughs> I'm waiting for someone to work with dust <laughs> and then you just never keep know. accumulating it. You never and know. And like mom, what are you going to tell me now? <laughs> the dust bunnies have come and have arrived. <laughs> well, you were talking about the sense of community and 
there is this sense of community between the pieces, especially as I'm making them. But there's also sort of an expanding community because as I show them to people, people start collecting them and they say, oh, you know, I just found a piece for you. I need, I need to get it to you. So, and my husband is superlative at this. He'll say, I have a gift for you and here will be this rusted something or other that he found, which is just as exciting as anything. So um, it's building a different kind of community. And I'm even thinking of putting a box outside my front door that says junk box. It's so a scavenger any, community. Yes, yeah. You know, and it's its its own culture. Yeah. Because we see beauty where others don't. And there, you know, you get those people that like very neutral, very clean, 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 architectural digest. <laughs> and then there's this whole other side of we deal with what is. Mm -hmm. And we don't need to clean it up that much, but we you move it around and you, you let it be. Mm -hmm. Well, I let it be in terms of the pieces appearing, but the number of people that tell me that they collect this stuff or have some at home or used to have a whole bunch, there's something that's much more universal about this than I would ever have understood. Kathy, you started people coming out of the closets. Well, and we're cleaning up Somerville. Out of the basements, <laughs> all over the place. They are, and Jason's just standing, he's just sitting there going, oh my God, don't say my <laughs> name. But yes, any of you known as pack rats, any of you known for just accumulating stuff? Friends, I remember hearing about a woman and her friends refused to go out to dinner with her because they said, if you stop by one more trash can or stop <laughs> on the sidewalk one more time, yeah. that's it. That's no it. No more. Mm -hmm. And then they start bringing you, hey, this is a piece of broken glass. Do you think you can use it? Um, I just found this. I I'm, thought of I'm ready. You. And what's really weird for people who don't get it, mm -hmm. your friend brings you the stuff and they say, this is for you. I thought of you. And they're going, you thought of her for rust? <laughs> you thought of her for right. a broken, you don't even know what it is? Yep. And it's like, yeah, that's friendship mm -hmm. that you get to see. And look at the smile. Like, you just look so oh, yeah, happy this, with this. This is just, I crank up the music. I have a studio in my home, third floor open the window, crank up the music, and I'm gone. I'm, I'm, in, a, I'm in the zone. And it, it's like, it's your space. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like, people ask me about artist space, mm -hmm. and it really is, um, it's personal, mm -hmm. and it, is, it changes with each, each day, and suddenly the light changes, and oh, I think I'll change this part of my studio. Right. Right. Or in other words, for other people, I think I'll clean today. <laughs> but depending on you know, how judgmental you are or not, you're gonna see everything takes on a different light. Mm -hmm. And I think- and a different personality, really. And it, it sort of stretches you mm -hmm. in a way to look at people mm -hmm. in, a, in a way too, because then you get to appreciate it's not all straight edges. Mm -hmm. It's not all perfect. Mm -hmm. You're not looking for perfect. Right. And as much as this is, I'm totally enthusiastic about this, there, there is that sort of fear factor when I'm presented with one of the pieces that I've blown up and I have to start and my colored pencils all lined up are begging me to do something but I'm not always sure where I'm going to start or what I'm going to do or what color something should be. So there's, there's, even though there's that wonderful part, fear and hesitation is also, I think, a part of the, of the creative process. And so you just have to live with it and work with it and overcome it and let go. And there are times when I finish a piece and I think, that's just god awful and I put it away and that's that. But there are other times when something will happen, it's like, oh, yes. And this is, this is a universal truth. Right. Whether you're a musician. Yes. Um, whether you're a singer, all of that, you never know what it's gonna be. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you do have to put it away. You've looked at it too much or too little. And then you put it in a part of your draw and there's a piece of tissue there with it and then a rock, and then you go, oh, how did that come? <laughs> it grew out of that. You know, it, it makes, it gives life to your whole everything. Oh, but we have work to show. Ah, uh, yes. I almost forgot about that. So, we can, here. 
Yeah, perfect. And so you can see in Moonscape here, here's the little piece. You can see how I enriched the top with red and purple. And you see how this sort of becomes this different orb, and there's the glue spot. And it, in some ways, it's very much the same, and in other ways, it's completely different and has a personality really all its own. You can see why I named it Moonscape, because it's just so mysterious. Well, we'll be going to Mars soon, so... <laughs> you, Any day now. So then we'll put this um, over here. Excuse me. Perfect. Ah, yeah, this one, this one, yeah. And it's funny, you know, I fall in love with these pieces and each piece becomes my favorite. And then I do another piece and this is no longer my favorite. I'll do another one and then I'll come back to this. This one I call overneath. And apparently this part is something to do with putting and air in your tires. Piece. And that is this piece, which is very gray. These, this little bump thing is very gray, but I made it, there's a blue quality and this is a yellow quality and then there's the orange. And you can see how when you actually are very up close, you can see actually my pencil marks. And I, I have a master printer who, um, Superior G. Clay in uh, Chester, Dan Sicardo, is just an absolute expert at this. And he has five different kinds of paper. So I experimented with the different kinds of paper. And this is the one that I like the most because it's got a certain tooth to it and it takes the pencils really beautifully. And I pretty much exclusively use Barrel uh, Prismacolor pencils because they're soft enough that you can really get a gradation going, and yet, if you sharpen it, you can get a nice sharp edge. Without, ri is, without ripping or... Yeah, and the quality of the paper allows for so much, I don't know, expression, just because of the quality of the paper itself. This is beautiful. I love that one, too. I mean, I love them all. It's hard not to. <laughs> but I love them for different reasons, and I'm not even sure why. Well, each one has a different personality. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And this one is, I call it forward. And this is amazing because when you see the size yeah. that this you started start out. out. With, you start out with something so tiny. Yep. It's minuscule. There's, there's the thing. I mean, it's probably not even three inches tall. And there it is. And um, yeah, I worked hard on this one. Um, and this is the blade. And somehow the, the texture is so much more interesting when it's blown up because you get to see all the little gritty details. It's really, it's just, it's glorious. And it also, it's full of surprises. There are things that I don't notice in little, in the little one. Like I didn't even see this sort of dark area underneath the loop. And suddenly when you see it big, uh, what is that? They're coming to get it too. Do you hear that? <laughs> Sirens, they know you can't have this art. No, no, back. <laughs> And I, this is just a, an odd piece of plastic. And this, I don't know what this is. This is quite beautiful. It's great, but it's, it's started out with just complete junk. And see, even when she says junk, it says something else. I'm just gonna move this. Okay. And put this. You got it? Yeah. Okay. And can I put this on top? Right sure. Here? Well, any words of inspiration? For anyone out there? Oh, sure. Um, I would suggest reading Elizabeth uh, Gilbert's book, Big Magic, which somehow allows you to think about creativity not as a thing, but more expressing your curiosity, because everybody is curious. So find something that is really interesting to you and pursue it through whatever means you need. Um, and don't listen to anybody else. Just do your thing. Trust yourself. Know that you're going to have bad times. Know that you're going to have difficulty along the way. When you encounter it, you encounter it, and you just keep moving on because you know being in the zone is just so delicious, and it will be, it will be there. But she was able to express it, I think, in ways that has really help, helped me be more facile with doing whatever it is that I want to do, which this is it. And it's squinting. I was thinking, doctors say don't do it, but it's important to do with this so that way you can see all the different dimensions. <laughs> so it's okay to squint. And mothers, stop telling, and fathers, stop telling your kids to stop bringing home that stuff. Okay? And Bring if they do, drop it off at my house. 
See, <laughs> this could be your this could be your retirement fund right here, people. <laughs> treasures, treasures in the street, and um, we don't have um, an exhibit. Uh, I'm sorry, reception date yet, but mm -hmm. you all will hear about it soon. We'll post that, and Kathy's exhibit will be up for let's say the middle of August until the middle of September, somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. Exciting news, we have a new hang system. So when you see this, you're gonna see, it's gonna be just delightful, it's gonna be wonderful. And then you're gonna meet Bob and Kathy and they're wonderful people. And then you get to chat with them. You'll see, of course, Mr. Jason, if he's there. And then Hans, um, bring extra food for Hans because he just eats all by himself and <laughs> <clears throat> doesn't give, you know, he, no, he's very generous, but just don't take too much. And, um, and then Jason, we have wonderful staff here. You do have wonderful staff. And they do a great job. We have a new director. Very Brian's exciting. Um, and the staff is wonderful. Uh, and, you know, community access television is important mm -hmm. because without it, it's a resource that puts you in in touch with people in your community that mm -hmm. you might see or might not see. It gives you a whole different perspective when you look on the ground, even when you see your own shadow. <laughs> Suddenly it's so different than it was before. Um, the world, this uh, the community access gives you new eyes yes. to see things and to hear things that you normally w might bypass. Mm -hmm. And regular TV is nice, but this gives you that extra movement and freedom. So, uh, you know, I have to say applause to SCAT TV. Indeed. For all the artists that have been here. And artists, we are always looking for people, so you can contact us at SCAT. And, um, you know, so we can bring your artwork here, too, mm -hmm. and share it. And thank you for being a guest. Oh, it's my pleasure. For being someone I've known for so many years. Yes, indeed continuously creative and coming up with new ways of working with work. So um, folks, till next month, please, you got to come down here, all right? You got to come down to the show and take a look. At, you're going to look at your closet in a whole different way, <laughs> I'm telling you. So until our next time around, I always end with assalamu alaikum. And in these times, I really mean yes. peace be to you. Indeed. And take care of yourself and just relish everything around you. Because that's what Kathy's done. And look at how rich she's made us today. <laughs> really. So thank you again. It's my pleasure.